we've got a busy day ahead of us. We gotta go uh, tell Everhart that we're a scumbag and we helped him, among other things. Oh, Kim is just waiting <laughs> in the fucking wings. Very nice. We'll be back. Actually, <clears throat> let's go ahead and investigate the car. Fuck it. A bottle drained of all its booze. It's frozen to the ice. Banged up fuel canister? I wonder what that's for. Um, a dented stainless steel canister for transporting and storing heavy fuel or oil. A logo on its side has been partially stripped over years of use. The government issued red dyed fuel oil inside looks like paint, though it smells much, much worse. banged up motor carriage lies half submerged in the icy water slowly sinking into the insulindian ocean only the cabin top rear wheels and the engine remain visible it must be cold and lonely down there in the icy water this is where the tracks on the plaza led to it appears to be so the lieutenant has a peculiar look in his eyes as he inspects the wreckage let's check it out i agree we should definitely investigate you get a sudden, sinking feeling. Stomach acid comes up as you look at the motor carriage in the deep, dark, cold water. Why the doom and gloom? It's just a sunken motor carriage. Some motor carriages are bound to end up in the sea. Run your hand over the cold metal. The motor carriage is properly stuck in the ice. Getting it out would require a team of specialists. What is the make of this motor carriage? Can I see a logo? The logo is too deep in the murky water. You can't make it out. But you do see a monkfish float by. How long has it been here? The ice hasn't closed around the vehicle yet. My guess is it's been here since last Saturday or Sunday. Well, well, looks like Jacob Irv's journey came to an abrupt end there. Your mocking tone finds no response but the motion of the waves. Yes, yes. Crazy recklessness. Yes, yes. Crazy recklessness. I'd say it has been here since last Saturday or Sunday. So what should we do about it? Let's wait for the low tide and see what's inside. How long will it take for the low tide to come in? I don't know. An hour or two tops? Let's wait for it. As you sit down in the old rusty playground, the world around you becomes very silent <clears throat> nothing but the sound of seagulls high above in the sky echoing like distant laughter ice cracks around the blue motor carriage in the sea <laughs> drama whistle a tune spit flies from your mouth to your moustache your chest the ground before you no sound though Raining heavily here, Chief. Mind keeping it down a bit? The lieutenant must think it's rather funny. He smiles and quickly turns away. Keep doing it. That's right. Just keep at it. It will come to you. With his lips puckered, the lieutenant lets out a beautiful, melodic trill that puts even the insulindic thrush to shame. You hear the sound echo on the large body of water. Clouds race across the spring sky. And suddenly, you just feel better about everything. The clouds pass in the sky, and the shadow of the swing moves like the hour hand on a timepiece. Thirty minutes have passed. Would you rather sit on an anthill for an hour or stand in a river of leeches? Well, historically, leeches have been used to prevent and even cure many ailments. 
Clouds on the horizon grow darker, and the shadow of the swing set keeps climbing. You hear the distant rumble of the city. Thirty minutes pass. If you had to side with the strikers or the shipping company, what would you choose? Luckily, I am already a member of an independent organization, and therefore do not have to choose between a rock and a hard place. But what if someone had a gun to your head? Your voice echoes on the water, strange and out <laughs> of like place some shit, in kids. the environment. Thirty more minutes pass. Can you make out the mark now? Detective, I've been able to make out the mark ever since we arrived. I find it odd that you haven't. It's a Coupri, model 40. It is a simple and rugged machine, favored by working men, government offices, uh, firefighters, animal control people. You know, those kinds of people. Squint your eyes. Is that a number on the side? Yes, 41. What do you think it stands for? Oh, God. I'm sorry, Harry. I'm so sorry. 41. Precinct 41. A massive pit opens up in your stomach, and the most terrible feeling comes over you. You feel like you're about to faint and fall off the swing. Your hands get clammy, and the air tastes sour to breathe. Oh, God, Harry. Oh, God, Harry. What did you do? No. Just no. Say no to this, Harry. Oh, no. I drove my car into the sea? I'm afraid so, yes. It looks like you drove your police motor carriage into the sea after you jumped across the canal. Maybe I was in pursuit of someone. Of whom? I don't think so. If anything, you were probably drunk. Probably. Try definitely. I can fix this. That is very unlikely. All the electrics are toast. That goes for the electromagnetic steering and brake systems as well. You'd be lucky to find one undamaged component in there. In a few months, there will be nothing but rust left of this vehicle. It'll be cheaper to buy a new one. Well, not cheaper. This motor carriage costs 40,000 real. But in the long run, it still makes more sense to buy a new machine than try to refurbish this. I can't even pay a hospital, uh, a hotel bill. Let's face it. This is a substantial loss to your district's budget. I mean, my station only has four other vehicles in addition to my kinema. How do we get it out? Detective, we don't. A rescue operation really isn't viable at this point. It's sunken too deep. There is no access ramp to the coast. What, so it's just gonna be there like that? I'm afraid it will have to be there like that for many years. Look at it. Parts of it might be salvageable. But overall, this machine is a write-off. The badge, the gun, now this? The lieutenant adjusts his glasses and doesn't say anything. There is also a fourth thing you've lost what thing more precious than the gun the badge and the motor carriage combined lost forever into the deepest of seas they're not going to take me back after this are they people are more valuable than machines training a police officer is even more costly people yes but not you well let's at least see what's inside Yes. Let's go take a look. Oh, we got a badge for Mr. Dubois, herself, and ooh, com RCM commander jacket. Uh, I don't know if I'm actually going to use it, though. It gives me Esprit de Corps and Visual Calculus. This gives me Empathy and Hand-Eye. This is better. I think it looks kind of cool, too, so. All right, we'll go ahead and inspect our badge. A police badge on which you see the photo of a man. You. Some seaweed is stuck to the back. I found my badge. At least something good came out of all this. The lieutenant glances at the badge in your hands. Study it. Encased between two durable plastic sheets is a bluish card with lines of information and a watermark in the shape of the street grid of Rivershall West. 
You see a photo, a name, a rank, a document number, the date of issue, and in the lower right corner, your precinct. Look at the photo. The man keeps winking at you with his green gray eyes. The photo is old, no doubt about that. Good choice. A newer photo would look different. Eight, maybe 10 years. The guy in the picture is rather good looking. He's got a nice haircut and is distinctly lacking in massive sideburns. And he's winking? Why? What do you think? His face is already contorted by the expression, although it looks less grotesque on him than it does on you now. It looks better on him because he isn't in as much pain while producing it as you are now. Although there's already a hint of that pain, certainly. Don't be fooled. The bad times have already begun. The badge in your hand shines as you rotate it, catching light. You see lines of information on it and a shining watermark. Name, Harrier Dubois. Harrier, that's long for Harry. So you are a Harry. Everhart was half right. Probably not a lot of people know your full name. Whoever told him your Harry Dubois didn't. Um, <laughs> Harrier Dubois it is then. Pleased to make your acquaintance, Harrier Dubois. He's not going to call you Harrier. He'll keep calling you officer when he's angry with you and detective when he's not. The badge in your hands shines as you rotate it, catching light. You see lines of information. Rank Lieutenant 2 Yefreiter. Lieutenant W. Yefreiter. What is a double Yefreiter Lieutenant? The Lieutenant is a rank above Sergeant and below Captain. It's the highest rank in the RCM that still does field work. I am a lieutenant. What about double Yefreiter? The title of Yefreiter is added to your rank when you decline a promotion to a higher rank. In your case, Captain. You have declined twice, thus your double Yefreiter. Declined? There are many reasons one would do this. The rank above you in your precincts décontage might be taken. Or sometimes promoted officers do not want to replace their superiors out of respect. And sometimes, they just prefer the type of police work available to their current rank. In your case, Lieutenant. Heavy duty case solving machine. What's a décomptage? Décomptage is the hierarchical system employed by the Revachol Citizens Militia. It means counting down to twos. The lowest rank is junior officer, usually teenagers. Then there are the patrol officers, then sergeants, lieutenants, and then a captain. That's basically it, except for a few kinks. Few kinks, kinks. Like satellite officers and the additional freighter rank I already explained. The long and short of it is, you're his superior. Ah, so you've been putting up with my bullshit because I'm your superior. No. I've been putting up with you because, despite an unconventional approach, you are doing good police work. It matters more than driving your motor carriage into the sea. And now we've even found your badge. And now we... yeah, okay. Still, he doesn't trust you completely. Turn back to the document. Such a small yet precious thing. Expensive paper caught between thick plastic like a fly in amber, it reads. Serial number? That's just the serial number. Revachol, Jamrock, Precinct 41, with some numbers thrown in there for good measure. Date of issue, 7th of November, 50. Four months ago. I'm guessing that's when you were promoted to the rank of Lieutenant W. Freighter. A new badge usually comes with a new rank. You seem to have been doing well then. The pain in your chest tells you you were working yourself to death. To earn that rank. The case created a lot of edge you have to take off. The death march really gets us going. A lot can happen in four months, especially in winter. The winters are never easy on you. Of that you are sure. I remember that time. That was a good time. We had a good work drink balance going. What happened, man? 
Pump it up! Precinct 41? Yes, it's the designation of your precinct. 41. Like mine says 57. The 57th is mostly industrial harbor. A lot of asphalt. The 41st is... What? It's a tough station to work in. You have all of Jamrock to cover. That district should have three precincts, but money is what it is. It's no wonder you are like you are, he thinks. But then again... But then again, it's a legendary district and a hell of a station too. It must be an honor and a curse to work with people like Price, McCoy, Berdyayeva. He knew all those people, although they're not from his station. They must be big. And you? Is it an honor to work with you? Don't ask him. Ask yourself. The badge in your hand shines as you rotate it, catching light. You see lines of information on it and a shining watermark. Okay, we need to go back across and do some stuff. Run some errands. The young man with piss faggot written on his back says, If I were a real skull now, I'd jack it, paint it in palm tree livery, then bottom light it, neon style. His companion wears a simple yet elegant slogan, fuck the world. A snazzy shit ripped skull mobile like this would make a fine trophy. We could like hang fucking shrunken heads from the side mirrors, cops heads, scary tribal shit. Yeah, tribal shit. A cock carriage like this would have proper skull value. <clears throat> While I appreciate the interest you take in my brutal motor carriage, I have to stop you right there. The RCM takes threats directed at its property seriously. I, um, it's just theoretical work, copper. No basis in reality. Man, if we were certified skulls right now... Was it a good idea on the lieutenant's part to get into this? Don't even answer that. Just leave. You can always come back later, on your own terms. Oh, I can come back alone. Okay, who are you? I can tell you who we're not, cop. We're not snitches. Or skulls. Which is not to say that the skulls are bitches and... On the contrary. The part of this presentation you want to take home with you cop man is we're not part of the skulls yet these skull people are more than an authority they're deities uh, my authority skill is through the fucking roof I love it you guys know Cindy oh yeah Cindy's a right proper skull yeah a true artist of the future just like Arno Van Eyck. Uh, by the way, if you see Cindy, give her our regards. He yeah, has returning from whatever void he was just visiting. Oh, there isn't a hint of hate in them. It's like they're pissed and fuck the world out of some kind of moral obligation. The lieutenant on your left is unusually lenient toward them. Who's Van Eyck? Old man, it doesn't matter. You'll be long gone before his greatness is recognized. A young woman kneels on a sheet of ice, as if looking for something lost ages ago. She bends until her right ear touches the frozen water. She listens to it crack, slowly. You're saying I'm an old man? Yep, old as fuck. Yeah, man. It's like, at death's door. No wonder you know nothing about the future. You won't be there. Why aren't there more skulls in Martinez? The Union does their share of policing in Martinez, at least where gangs are concerned. That's why there isn't much organized crime around here. Apart from the Unions themselves, of course. Don't you worry about that. We're gonna make up for the deficit. Yeah, we are. 
Your rhetoric is confusing. Are you in the Skulls or not? We're not franchise Skulls. Well, not yet. Once we get our name out there, we'll have a chance to join them. And what makes you think the organization would accept you? Because we can be just as psycho and vicious. You'll see. Ah, you'll see for sure once we're in. It's the last thing you'll ever see before the Void consumes you. You don't feel very scared. Are you sure a Skull would say that? Uh, well, yeah, I mean, we're only saying practice things for now, so we don't mean no harm to the Skull's brand, or to you. This is definitely something the Skulls would say. But we're not trying to encroach on the Skulls' brand in any way. On the contrary, we're just here to market it. You're just pretending to be nasty and vicious like the Skulls? Hey, we could be just as hard. Like pavement on top of pavement. Or a brick on top of another brick. Or a grave on top of a grave. Why aren't there more... Okay, enough of this scullery then. Mm-hmm. So who are the Skulls? You don't know? What kind of cop are you? I'm glad you asked. The question was rhetorical. The Skulls are the most vicious gang of the Besmertnay. The nastiest bunch of psychos ever. Jacking carriages and getting into high-speed chases. Possessing an infinite amount of fuck-all swagger, infamous for their non-verbal modus operandi. They usually occupy the burnt-out quarter in Jamrock, or you can find them loitering around the brightly painted bottom-lighted vehicles. Ah, uh, <laughs> I can't wait to become a skull. Bottom lights are wretched aggressive. You know anything about the murder that took place here? Murder? Yeah, behind the whirling and rags. Yeah, sure. We'll gladly tell you everything we know about it. <clears throat> it was a man. Also... He was hanged. Don't fuck with me, I'm the law. He was hanged from a tree. Yeah, I mean, duh. These punks don't know anything. Let's just move along. Hey, stop right there. How does one know anything? What does that mean? Fucking philosophy, man. You can do aggressive shit with philosophy. Justify shit. Like murder or wasting your life away. What's with the jackets? What about them? Why do you have a jacket that says piss faggot on it? Well, first off, it's a statement and not necessarily something that characterizes me as a person, even though the statement has character. And I do like piss. The word piss epitomizes the struggle taking place in the world. Things being defined as they seem, not as they are. And I guess it's also about communal spirit, the future, and truly appreciating our differences. I've played this game before they put this ridiculous, obnoxious censorship in it, and this only, this is a terrible decision. I am shocked. I'm sure some blue-haired weirdo complained really loudly. Also, you've got to admit, it catches the eye. And since the Grand Piper is slowly but steadily moving towards basing the economy on it, attention, it is imperative that the medium itself convey the message. Uh, sure. What I mean by this is we are all pissed <laughs> and that the world is inherently meaningless. Okay, what about you? Why do you have fuck the world written on your jacket? Like I said before, many men keep searching for the one, for so-called true love, which is actually just obsession masquerading as kinship, the thrill of the chase. The hollowness that fills your chest cavity after catching. To catch a fish, you'll need to hurl the law many times. And even then, it isn't certain that you'll get anything. If you blow up the lake, though... Blow it up. You get more fish in a shorter time. And for time is of the essence and fleeting ever so quickly, one must think of a way to fuck the whole world and not get caught up in fucking someone. Because when one fucks everything, he fucks nothing. And that, to me, feels glorious. Sticking your dick into the void. Is it a coincidence that here we have two badass jackets and two badass cops? Hey, Kim. Yes? 
What do you think about the jackets? Leather jackets adorned with immature writing? The ideology they convey helps the boys justify poor choices in life and fashion. I'm not a fan. Sure, the jackets are scaring you. That's cool. What are you implying? Which one would you wear? I'm not sure I understand you, detective. You more of a piss faggot or a fuck the world kind of guy? Neither. Come on. Fine. If only to end this discussion. Theoretically, if I were a juvenile delinquent, if I were to already be down that path, I think piss <laughs> is the stronger of the two statements. Fair enough. Uh, I feel like I'm more of a fuck the world kind of guy. Seems about right, especially considering your heroic exit attempts. So are we done here? Or you don't need us around for your secret whisper party, do you? Well, talking to you has been something. I'm gonna try to get the jacket. That ride is fucking hey, piss Look who No, no, no. Don't ask anything. Be subtle and scary. The boys dream about being skulls. Use that. How? Boys, with those jackets, you're gonna be skull kings in no time. What? No! Skulls don't have kings. I think. And we're not even in yet. Yeah, man, keep your voice down. Skulls don't take it lightly when folks pretend to be them. We're not even prospects yet. Not even prospects and you're already aspiring to be kings? Whoa, you boys are ambitious. Only prospects and already planning a coup in the skull. You're destined to go far. He gets it. Passive aggressive flattery. Shut the fuck up. Are you trying to get us killed? Now bring it to the jackets and, yes, start shouting. Yeah, I want to be a cool killer skulls too. Like you guys, but we don't have our skull jackets. Please be quiet. What? What do you want? The, the jackets? Yeah, I can't actually yell because I live in an apartment complex. <laughs> you got it. No need for cruelty. School Skull King makes shrunken heads out of us. Fuck you, man. Take them then. He looks around the plaza. People are noticing him now. Y you offer your jackets to us like that? It'd be impolite to refuse. Oh, man. Okay. I get it. Skulls don't really wear slogans anyway. Fuck. Oh, I got both. That's cool. The lieutenant watches the boys take their jackets off with mild amusement. One second. I'm seeing if there's actually a difference. Yeah, okay. My instinct was, well. Since you said you're more of a piss faggot kind of guy, I'll take the other one. I'm absolutely okay with not having either one, thank you. Why not? They're a pair. We could raise hell, go undercover, hard. This case doesn't require us to go undercover or raise hell. In fact, I don't think the jackets will be useful at all. I just wanted them to not have them anymore. Cold-hearted cop. Fine, I'll take both then. Do. I'm fine with that. I don't know, okay, Eric. Okay, well. It's cold out. I didn't know that. I thought I had to make a choice, oh well. Yeah, let's get out of here. The cops fucked us. Mm. We got the fuck the world and the piss faggot. It's not even good, but hey, that was fun. We need to also go talk to a bunch of traditionalist people, but uh, First, I want to go talk to Cindy the Skull.
Hello again, officers. Have you come to admire my mural? Piss faggot and fuck the world send their best. I don't believe it. I've never known those boys to have manners. The bemusement in her voice doesn't fully mask genuine tenderness. I think they're afraid of you. They'll never be skulls, but, but their hearts are in the right place. Skulls are cool. Can I be a skull? Fat chance. But you can still do your part to revitalize the neighborhood. But I want to be a skull. She throws you a conspiratorial glance, then presses her finger to her lips and squints up at the sky, as though straining to hear something in the distance. Have you noticed the quiet? Every so often, you might hear a gunshot pierce the air somewhere in Jamrock. But in Martinez, no gunshots, no sirens. The people are languishing in boredom and complacency. This place is a sepulchre. We'll paint it red. We bring the raucous. You bring the sirens. What is it with these skulls and cooperation? They have to be the nicest violent street gang in Revershaw West. I ain't no... Actually... We weren't put on this earth to make your life pleasant, fucko. The lieutenant is... I've already talked to her. That a on her. Someone's got to keep an eye... On a first name basis with her, uh, have you got a crush on her? Just an ordinary Okay, we need to talk to the racist lorry driver, the, uh, Rene, and, I don't know, someone else traditional. Vigilance officer, what can this old carabineer do for you? Rene, I need to go back in time, can you help me? The lieutenant flashes you a quick side glance. What are you up to now? What? The old... Soldier scowls at you unamused. He thinks you're playing a joke on him. Now, now. I'm sure the officer means it figuratively. Like a forensic technic or something, right? I'm not kidding. This is for Revishal. Uh, I'm dead serious. Can you help me get back to a time when love was still possible? Monsong, son. You must have a loose screw up there or something. Sounds like you really mean it. All right, I will entertain this fantasy if you tell me what interest does an RCM officer have in time travel. Oh, you're in for a treat, officer. Seeing the playful side of old René, he is about as rare as a red rainbow. Men have lost their way. I want to guide them back like a beacon. Even after the revolution, after the beachheads, there was a chance. Had we just stayed true to our values? It happened slowly, like a seedling growing into a tree. Tiny incremental steps, imperceptible till the ticket was so thick you couldn't clear it with a flamethrower. I know I can get history back on the right track. The right track? This is the right track. The only track. This is the world we shaped, a reflection of what we are. Cowardly, ugly, and numb. And there are no second chances. We don't deserve them. You can't just go back and restart. That would make everything meaningless. A shadow of pain comes over his face. There's something substantial moving in him, trying to get out. What is it? Regret. My God. That is a insane... It cannot be retried? It requires, let's see. My God. Hmm. We have to roll a double six. 
It might piss him off. Regret about what? You know the answer. Don't think. Just say it. War. War? I mean, yes. Yes. It changes men. Changes lives and... Uh, what the hell are we talking about here, officer? Look, we just want to play our game. So unless there's something else. War isn't tied with regret for him. Never mind. The moment is gone. The Carabineer is too old and feeble to be useful. But you will carry on. Mouverez tempore, Kingsman. The old Carabineer looks at you with weary expectation. Hmm. I have an idea. I have to talk to... So, because this all has to do with love, 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 whatever. Renee mentioned, like, a girl. And we had a conversation option to talk to his friend about it. So I'm gonna see if we can talk to his buddy. And maybe we'll have a higher chance of getting that skill check. It is such a pleasure to see you again, officer. How may I have the citizens' militia on this fine day? You mentioned uh, Jean-Marie Billieu. Who's that? Oh, sweet Jenny. Jenny. She was the finest woman in all of Revachol. Maybe the entire world. Do not defile her memory, Gaston. Let her rest in peace. His tone lacks its usual intensity. Like he doesn't feel he has the right to speak on the matter. What happened? She died of pneumonia two winters ago. It was a quiet passage. Peaceful. René and I were both by her bedside when she... Died. No use sugarcoating it. Won't bring her back. Will it now? Departed. Hmm. Until the very end she couldn't decide between us. The most indecisive woman I've ever met. A quick grimace of pain passes over René's features, but he immediately regains control. His face now a dispassionate mask again. Ah, so you both know her. We knew her, all right. Lived on the same street our entire lives, just two houses apart. The three of us have been best friends since we were four. She was René's first girl back when the prick was 16. They were courting till he decided he'd rather die for some great ideal than just be happy. And then you stole her from me. He jerks forward, but then grabs his chest and stops. Do not intervene. Well, technically, you stole her from me because we'd been pretty close ever since you two had that falling out over the ink you spilled over a pretty yellow dress. We were just boys then. This was different. You. No point starting this all over again. For the thousandth and the first time. Especially when we have company. Officer. Why do you think she was indecisive? She could never make up her mind about anything. What to have for breakfast, favorite color, or which one of us to marry. The look in his eyes is happy and distant. She was always leaving one of us for the other, but never long enough to actually get married. Women, right? Heck, technically, we're both still engaged to her. You always confused her. Couldn't let us be happy. So just her with your fancy words and pastries. He suddenly remembers you are still there. Falls silent and turns away. Thanks for sharing. Of course, officer. Memory, sweet, sweet. Of course, sure, officer. No. It is such a pleasure to Okay, we'll see if that helps. Vigilance officer, what can this old carabineer do for you? I understand Jean, Je, Jean, Jenny Marie meant a lot to you. There's nothing for you to understand here. It is not her death you are investigating. Where was this photo of you taken? Revachal Fair, 91 in the Forberg district. A parade was held to honor Guillaume Lelion's name day. 
and the Carabineers marched in the place of honor. You look happy in the picture. This was the happiest day of my life. It is said in such a matter-of-fact tone, it leaves no room for doubt. What happened with you, Gaston, and Ginny? I was 22 when I returned from King Guillaume's Akira operation in the south and found my sweetheart in the arms of this wretch. I won her back, but while I was dealing with some issues... You were like a dark cloud sucking the joy out of every living thing around you. And you... you... hurt her. Dark cloud. That sounds unpleasantly familiar. I... Uh, I... Those days and memories are gone. He nods and looks at Rene with something resembling compassion. The old soldier says nothing, but when his glance quickly runs over Gaston's face, there's an odd look in his eyes. Okay, now let's try to get Rene to help me go back in time. Sell? The lieutenant, what a what? He thinks. Now, now, I'm sure the officer means it figuratively, like a forensic technique or something, right? I'm dead serious. Can you help me go back in time when love was still possible? One song, son. All right. Oh, you're in for a treat, officer. Seeing the playful M side. Men have lost their the way. I want to guide them back. Even after the it happened slowly, like a seedling going into a tree. The right side and the other. There's something substantial moving in regret. Jesus, it barely even did anything. Holy shit. You need a god tier uh, pain threshold. Him. What? That's amazing. Him. There's tenderness in the Carabineer's look. Tenderness that's curdled into pain or something darker. Ex-love, ex-tenderness. Even worse, a love aborted and smothered, stamped beneath his brilliant boot heel. You catch the old Carabineer's gaze, slowly leaving his opponent's wrinkled face as his dark eyes meet yours. Whatever turmoil raged in him a moment ago is quelled for now willed back into the darkest unexplored depths of his mind never meant to be shared seen or confronted our lives are unique and i have neither the means nor the will to help you change that but i will gladly assist you with police matters the carabineer is too old and feeble to be useful but you will carry on Mouvere tempore kingsman for the tenacious no road is impossible. The old carabineer looks at. Oh boy. <clears throat> That's cool. Okay, we needed to. Um. <clears throat> we'll go ahead and send the body to the police. The man is decomposing visibly now. Every hour, he looks less like a creature and more like a pile of intestines. The lieutenant adjusts his glasses and takes a deep breath. Hmm. Search the body one more time thoroughly. You run your hands over the victim's cold body, his limbs, his torso with its swollen organs. Maybe you should be more thorough. His finger. Do you think you can't shake the feeling that there are more secrets concealed in the flesh before you? There's something we're not seeing. Okay, well, we are in leave of Mortis here. He is disintegrating. We need to refrigerate the body. 
if we want to conduct another examination, and we need to do it fast. All right, where do we find the fridge? Hey, wasn't there a giant ice bear sarcophagus below that building? He points toward the commercial area. Why, yes, there was. It was massive. Red eyes glowing in the dark. So that's what the ice bear-shaped refrigerator is for. <laughs> no, that's an overstatement. It's not actually for storing cadavers, or at least I hope so. I think we should take a look at it first. Make sure it's big enough before we carry him over. Let's move. With every hour, whatever we are looking for in the deceased will become harder to find. The man is the lieutenant adjusts his glasses and takes a deep breath. Okay, let's... Uh... Go and see what this is about. It's down here. I think it's right here. Only the red cable is plugged into the breaker box, while the black one lies neglected on the floor. Uh, what are you doing? We need the fridge for the body. The bear's eyes are still glowing red, watching over all the ice cream wrappers hidden inside its belly. What do you think of this fridge, Kim? It looks big enough for two corpses. It's certainly an eccentric choice, but it is capacious and cold enough to... But the optics on this are awful, he thinks. We need to be as silent as we can. Shall we go and get the body, then? I'll take the head, you take the feet. The stairs won't be easy, but we'll manage. The two of you... Easily. Let's do it. The body is heavier than the and stinkier. It takes half an hour to get it down to the bed. Then ten more minutes to stuff it into the fridge. The loot beautiful. A dead body in a nice bare fridge. This is some of the best body's work I've ever done. You've definitely earned a drink after this. Perhaps even some pagan rites. Yes, we need to celebrate by performing pagan rites. Let's bring out the mead and set it on fire. I knew you would say that. I knew this would lead to drinking. No, no more. This is paganistic enough, and it does not leave this room. He means it. He doesn't want to be the ice bear cop. I think this is a glorious achievement, and people need to know about it. I hope not. At least we've stopped the body from decomposing further. Now you can conduct another inspection under controlled circumstances. Inside the icy realm of the ice bear fridge, the corpse stands slumped, waiting. Tell me something, dead man. Shoot, Looney Rooney. How do you like the fridge? I like it a lot, brother. This really is your finest hour. You're a genius, a regular Coppolangelo. At the autopsy, you said you have ancient mysteries. Oh, yes, Cobo Milobo. In the gift horse's mouth, tracts and wakes and waterways, ancient materials buried. But to where, brother? Just a small gulp away. My beloved Kobo, has small gulp away. Come back. Okay, we'll save, and now it's easy. The bear's eyes are still glowing red. Ooh. It's guarding over the freezing corpse hidden inside its belly. We looked in the mouth. We didn't establish, or the, the dead body told us we don't believe that his death was caused by the hanging, and we refrigerated the body, so... 72% chance perception. Re search the body one more time thoroughly. Your arms reach out and your eyes close, as if by their own volition. It's dark all around. You feel cold, slippery flesh, first with your fingertips, then under the palm of your hand. What's this? His face, his cheeks, his nose, his fat, swollen lips. Like a spider, your hand crawls over his features. Everything is silent. Put your fingers in his mouth. The oral 
internal cavity is cold and moist. A ball-like tongue attaches itself to the base of the mouth, lolling around like a scallop. You're on the right track. Play with it. This feels right. The tongue moves freely in the cavity. The mucus of the mouth is slippery, delicate to touch. From the soft meat, teeth are budding. Hard pearls of bone in the gums and in the back of the mouth. Can you feel it? You're so close. Rip his jaws open now. Look in. Open your eyes and look. A vision of black and dark red death pried open by your naked hands and studded with teeth. Looks like he's laughing. Death fumes rising from the throat and there in the back of his mouth above the bell of the uvula right in the soft palate you see a hole barely visible to the human eye it is swollen shut almost vanished no larger than 0.4 centimeters in radius the edges appear darkened fuck yeah mm -hmm. keep going a black trickle of liquid runs into his throat from the wound put your finger into it your index fits right in there a tight tunnel of flesh opens up tissue damage wide enough for two fingers as you push both in you reach through his mouth right into his brain stem feel around the basal ganglia feels clumpy what entered here has torn apart his reptilian complex push deeper your fingers slide into the remains of his limbic system there is no resistance it's gelatinous the slug-like structures are damaged too the tearing extends deep into both hemispheres. There's a cavity cut right between the hemispheres. The lieutenant answers with the sound of his pen on paper. Push deeper. Your fingers are all the way in now, reaching toward the inside of his skull. The cavity goes further, but the entry wound isn't wide enough for the rest of your hand to follow. All the muscles in your body harden. Time to enter him. Wriggle in. Your fingers reach toward his skull. His cerebral cortex feels like jelly. Cold jelly. Strange fluid streams down your wrist as you push deeper until you feel it on the tip of your finger. Sharp serrated material. The edges cut right into your skin. The pain is barely noticeable under the adrenaline rush. Fish it out. Are you fucking kidding me? 72%. You push your hand further in. Whatever is in there keeps rolling between your fingers as you beckon it to come out. Help me, Lieutenant. Out comes his small folding knife. The Lieutenant moves its blade across the man's skull, searching for the exit wound. There. Nod towards the protrusion. Mm -hmm. Withdraw your hand four centimeters, please. Pull your... Fingers back and nod. With a crack, he punches the knife in the skull. Then, one more time, and one more, until the bone comes loose like eggshell. Inside, you feel the jelly move from his poking. Can you push it out? Push. A small flower of metal blossoms from the man's head, followed by your finger. A bullet. A non caliber. Boom. You may remove your hand from the victim's head now, officer. Here is your prize. He drops the bullet in an evidence bag and puts it into your hand. Your other hand, not the one covered in blood and shit. We need to add an item to the injury list. Injury number four. Oval entry wound with an abrasion collar. Soft palate, back of mouth. High velocity. Temporary cavity in brain tissue. Small exit wound on the occiput. How does that sound? Just nod. Opinion, fatal injury. You're goddamn right. And one last thing. We can now fill in injury number three. Ligament mark. Opinion, non-fatal. Post-mortem. Treatment. He's proposing the bullet was the real cause of death and the hanging an attempt to conceal this fact. The ligature mark, the fractured hyoid bone, it was all treatment. Yes, and the belt around his neck. The hanging, even dragging him to the yard. All of it was done after this man was already dead. Agreed. I have had my doubts since you showed me the tracks. Why did they carry him over? Why not march him, I thought. 
There was no satisfying explanation. There have been other signs too, small things. We were right not to assign hanging as cause of death, as the perpetrators expected we would. No such luck for them. We didn't fall for it, he thinks. There's pride in there. Maybe the bullet holds more answers? Yes, we should take a closer look at it. I am certain it has more to tell us. This little thing could reveal much about the weapon that shot it. Who would do this? That's for us to find out. But this, it will make finding them just a little easier. Why would someone do this? To hide something. The real killer? The real motivation? What really happened here? I think I need to clean myself. Oh, you really, really do. I am glad to hear you say that. Your room in the Whirling and Rise should come with a bathroom. Be sure to make use of it in the evening. What happens next? We bag the corpse and carry him to the holding pen of my kinema. I can transport him to processing myself, but I will be gone for the rest of the day. Be gone? Work on the case. Tend to personal matters. Try not to do anything too dangerous. An officer needs backup in a neighborhood like this. I'll leave that choice to you. And one more thing. Great work, detective. The word lingers in the air of the basement. Far away, ice cream makers are buzzing and the sea wind blows outside. Detective. You can take him, Kim. All right. He takes out the shiny black body bag and starts pulling the plastic over the dead man's face. I will need a little help carrying him. You take the hands, I'll take the legs. One little snippet at a time, very nice. And we'll get back to what we were doing, which was, I need to find these uh, traditional folk and talk to Everard. In fact, uh, we will end it here and continue on our quest next time.